How we doing today, guys? It's Jesse with the Common Man Corpus Christi, bringing you news and politics through a common sense lens. And man, I'll tell you what, you put one little video uh, from with some insider information from inside of the city, and boy, it's like the little birdies just pop out left and right. Because after that video was put out and was seen this morning, another little birdie reached out to me and showed me this little thing here from a sub stack that is from the Big City Mayor's Coalition. So apparently our dear sweet mayor, Paulette Guajardo, signed off on this letter calling for more gun restriction in the state of Texas because of the El Paso tragedy, or not the El Paso, the Uvalde tragedy that just happened not too long ago. As you can see right here in the highlighted portion right here, this is Mayor Paulette Guajardo Corpus Christi right here. So let's go over some of this stuff that the uh, dear sweet mayor has signed off on and has attached her name to and go through the step by step exactly why Pretty much none of what they put in here will actually do any good, and it's just going to restrict you as a law-abiding citizen and gun owner from your per your God-given inalienable rights. So before we get into this article, well, actually it's a substack, but I guess technically that's basically the same thing. If you do enjoy my content, hit that like button, share it with all your friends, and subscribe if you are not already, because this is the exact same kind of stuff I want to do, and I'm the kind of inside information and insider reporting that I want to get in and bring the kind of information to all of you that the mainstream media, the legacy media, is completely ignoring, especially here in Corpus Christi, our local news stations are horrible about that. They are complete and total shills. If you can tell, they left out the fact from my, if you can tell from my video yesterday that they left out the fact that Roland Barrera was going to be completely paid for on his France vacation trip on the taxpayer dime. So obviously, you know, the local media isn't worth squat when it comes to reporting on local matters. So that's what I am here from at the common man, Corpus Christi, trying to do. Report on local matters and need, I need more insiders to come out and tell me about stuff like this. So if you know any information that you think needs to be exposed, that the local media is not covering, let me know. Reach out to me on Twitter. You can reach out to me on Facebook. You can find me here at the email address that's listed with this YouTube channel. Come see me. I am trying to pull off a James O'Keefe Project Veritas style stuff for South Texas because people need to know more about this kind of information and the legacy media is just going to cover it up or completely ignore it in the process. So let's check out this sub stack from the Texas uh, BCM, which I'm assuming, yeah, Texas BCM. So Texas big city mayors. So, Texas state must act now to prevent next mass shooting in Texas. 13 Texas mayors, including our dear sweet Paulette Guajardo, who I have met personally, and also, just as an FYI, I did reach out to comment before, at the time of this, I did reach out to comment before I made this video. At the time of this recording, I have not heard back from either the mayor, I reached out on Twitter, I tagged her on Twitter, and I also sent an email to her official Corpus Christi City Council. They have my phone number, they have my email, they can reach out to me at any time. I said if they didn't get a chance to comment before, before this video went out that I would gladly bring on Mayor Paulette and talk to her about all of this stuff and what her views on this and give her a chance to rebut the arguments that I'm about to give you in this video. So I have done my due diligence and tried to reach out to them. Haven't heard anything back yet. I honestly don't expect to considering the way the city and a lot of the mayor's office in particular is very hard about reaching out to and actually talking to independent journalists or independent people in, in general. They try to keep her on a lockdown. There's some good things that the mayor has done and I have personally complimented her on those to her face. But that we are not a shill we are not a shill YouTube channel. We are not a shill anything when it comes to this kind of stuff. I'm not going to shill for anybody just because I like them and I like some of the things they did in the past. If they did bad things, we are going to call them out on it. And that's exactly what we are doing here today. Whether I like the mayor or not, whether I voted for her or not, does not matter because at the end of the day, the truth is the only thing that matters. And this truth needs to be presented to all of you so you know exactly the kind of person and the kind of beliefs that our mayor has so that way you can make a proper decision in the fall when they come up for re-election the next time. All right. So here we go. 13 Texas mayors call on state leadership to take immediate action on common sense gun reform. Common sense gun reform. Anybody that watches this, my videos or watches this channel probably agrees with me on a lot of this stuff. We know what common sense gun reform means. There is no such thing as common sense gun reform. The Second Amendment is absolute, okay? If you don't like it, change the Second Amendment. Call a constitutional convention and fix it. But guess what? You know there is no political will to do that because as many people have stated in the past, we are not a nation of laws and we never have been. We're a nation of political will and we always will be. That's what the Constitution is there to protect. The fact that people are lazy and are not going to go out of their way to change the Constitution, they just want to try to violate it and usurp it. And that's exactly what every single little proposal in here does with the exception of probably two. So here we go. Texas big city mayors, a bipartisan coalition of mayors from our states. Now, wait, I'm going to stop them right there on the whole, this whole bipartisan thing, because I, my understanding was, and maybe it's different in other cities, but my understanding was, at least here in Corpus, 
It's a nonpartisan race. So how would you even know what party these mayors come from unless they flat out came out and told you? Bipartisan shouldn't be a thing in mayors entirely because they shouldn't be a left and a right from my understanding. Now, I don't know anything outside of Corpus Christi as far as like the rules for Houston or San Antonio, whether you can rep- run as a Republican or Democrat. I don't know. And anybody that does know, I would really love if you'd reach out to me, put a comment down below in the comment section on this video. Let me know if this is different in your city than it is here in ours. But ours is a nonpartisan election for all of our government agencies. So, so I don't know what the hell they mean by bar partisan. Um, I know there was a rumor and I, I've got it from pretty reliable sources inside of the GOP that Mayor Paulette did vote in the GOP primary. Whether that actually means anything or not, I'm not sure because in Texas you can vote in either primary without being, having to be registered to a specific party. You're just only allowed to vote in one primary. So maybe that's something to look into as well. So let's go on. Also something I kind of want to point out, is it funny that it's 13 mayors? Did they say that yet in this article? It's 13 mayors. Yeah, 13 Texas mayors. Odd choice of numbers on that one. 13, huh? Kind of strange. Makes you think God works in mysterious ways, huh? Um, We represent a continuum of political ideology and have come together because we know most Texans, really, have a strong desire for common sense reform to protect our children. What's your definition of common sense reform? Because I guarantee you, if you went letter by letter on this list we're about to go over, the majority of Texans would not agree with most of this stuff. So whatever kind of smoke you blew up all these mayor's asses or whoever you tried blowing this smoke up to or whatever you got, whatever you tricks or bullshit you tried to pull, I guarantee you if you pulled this by the individual things and not just as a, because what they do in a lot of the polling is they'll go common sense gun reform and then leave it completely ambiguous and absolutely say nothing more about it in the poll. They don't specify by what they mean. Here, they're actually going to specify. I guarantee if you polled the majority of Texans, they would not support this. As mayors, we believe that the legislature and executive leaders can come together to find the right solution for Texas. Yeah, arm everyone. We specifically calling upon Governor Abbott to call a special session and add the following to the call. Requiring universal background checks for gun purchases. Okay, the kid in Uvalde passed a background check. He legally purchased those firearms. Where the hell he got all the money to legally purchase such fancy firearms with that much ammo? No idea. Maybe that's the question we should be asking here. Okay. And the other thing is, background checks happen on pretty much everything with the exception of private sales in between individuals. Right? And you know one of the reasons why you don't do that kind of shit? Because if you, say, say you live in a rural area, right? And you and Bob, you and Bob Joe live next to each other, right? Joe Bob, you and Joe Bob live next to each other, right? You are literally a hundred and fifty miles from in any direction from a town, let alone a gun store, okay? Right? So you and your neighbor Joe Bob, Joe Bob, he's got a pro, he's got sheep, right? Let's just say, for example, he's got sheep, right? He's having a problem with wolves, right? Well, Joe Bob's rifle breaks, right? So Joe Bob, because he has sheep and we have a problem with wolves in our area, he needs a gun to defend his sheep. Universal background checks and the way they talk about them would prevent me from selling my neighbor, Joe Bob, a gun to defend himself from, defend him, defend his sheep from wolves simply because of the fact that we would have to drive 150 miles at minimum to find some a licensed FFL in order to share, sign that over. Okay, given the amount of busy, how busy farmers are and how, you know, most rural people don't want to go to the city for anything. They are very self-sufficient. They very rarely make trips to town unless they absolutely need something, right? That's not going to help. And then if, what if it takes that 150 miles, you're going to spend all day long a single day out of a farmer's day, which if you've met any farmers, you know how busy they are, right? They don't have time for shit like this. You're going to stop me from giving Joe Bob the ability to defend his flock of sheep from the wolves by doing a universal background check. It's total bullshit. It's stupid. And it makes absolutely no sense. Background checks to begin with don't make any damn sense, but that's a whole nother conversation we can have at another time. Increase the age to purchase assault weapons in Texas to 21. Okay. Here's the problem with that right there. Assault is an action verb. It's a verb. It's not a noun. Assault is not a thing. Okay. Assault is an action. It is something you do. There is no such thing as an assault weapon. There are weapons you can use to assault people. I can do, a, I can take a butter knife. I can take a spoon and assault someone with it. There is no such thing as assault weapons. Now, what a lot of time when people hear assault weapons, they think of the movies, they think of full auto, they think of selective fire. Well, guess what? That basically is already outlawed in the United States. You have to go through a year long process to get a tax stamp just to own a a rifle or a handgun, anything with selective fire. Okay. That's how long of a process it takes to go through this. So this whole bullshit about assault weapons is exactly that. It's bullshit. 
Okay? All right, let's move on. Pass red flag laws to identify threats before shootings. Let me explain to you something about red flag law, right? Anyone who is familiar with New York stop and frisk law, okay, red flag laws are that on steroids, ladies and gentlemen, okay? Because literally stop and frisk was nothing more than giving the government the ability to violate your rights by coming up to you and just searching you without any probable cause, without any reason whatsoever, other than you looked shifty, okay? You wanna know the other major problem with that? Guess who it targeted? Specifically minorities and people of color, right? People in low income areas. It was actually a directive that was given to the police department in New York City to specifically target black and brown communities. And when the mayor at the time was addressed with that, it was the guy that ran for freaking Democratic, uh, the nominee last time, the one that spent millions of dollars, Bloomberg. When Bloomberg was asked about that, you know what his response was? He didn't even try to cover it up. He didn't even try to lie about it. You know what he said? Well, that's where all the crime is. What? Like, you specifically ordered people to Go after them based on their skin color, based on the fact that the that's where the crime happens? That gave you an excuse to use it? No, 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 no. If you want to do that, you target specific areas with high crime. You don't tell cops to search black and brown people specifically. That's insanity. That's racist. That is racist as all shit. Okay? Like literally. So you think that's going to be any different than a red flag law? Because here's the thing about a red flag law. All it requires is for me to go to the cops and go, hey, I've got this potentially made up evidence because it's so easy to fabricate like online postings, online text messages. There's all kinds of spoof accounts out there. It's super easy to fake this stuff. So say you got an ex-husband or an ex-wife that's really pissed off at you. Or say you got an ex-husband that is abusive, right? And you're trying to get away from him. You're going through the divorce process. You've already got the restraining order, but we know restraining orders are nothing more than a piece of paper. You've got firearms at the house to prevent him from coming in there and doing damage to you or yours, right? So here's what he's going to do. He's going to take these made up messages to the cops and then he's going to go to the cops and go, look, she's threatening to kill me. She's got guns. We have to take away from, we have to take them away from him. Those cops are going to take that in front of a judge and the judge is going to look at the evidence and go, yep, here you go. Go take their guns. That's literally all it takes. You are not able to defend yourself. There is no right to due process with red flag laws. Anybody can make up anything they want about you and literally go through the process and have the cops show up with guns to take your guns. All right. Now, if you've ever been on the wrong side of a restraining order because of some false allegations, you know how easy this is to do. Okay. Go try to get a restraining order against anyone. It's going to be the exact same ease of process to get a temporary restraining order as it is to get a red flag law served on someone. This is literally going to be the cops coming in and taking your guns without even decent cause whatsoever, without you even a chance to respond to it. So you think stop and frisk was bad? This is going to be stop and frisk on steroids, people. And yeah, maybe you trust your local sheriff right now. Maybe you trust your police chief to not do this and to do it the right way and to not just go easy with all this stuff. Well, guess what? That police chief, that sheriff, that mayor that runs your city police department is not always going to be in charge. What happens when the guy on the other side of the aisle that you don't like gets in power? What do you think he's going to, how do you think he's going to use and abuse this completely unconstitutional bullshit? All right. Think about that for a second. They will come after you with this. This will be a tool of the state that you have no legal repercussions to prevent happening to you. They will come in and seize your property on nothing more than a rumor. Tell me how that's going to work out for everybody. Significant increase in mental health support funding. Now, with the exception of the funding part of that, because I'm more a lean on the smaller government side, I don't want the government to spend money That's because it's not theirs, it's ours, it's all our money, right? I am totally down for a increase in mental health support because I think that is the major factor that we have in the United States right now with these people going insane and hurting other people. That's literally what 90% of this is. It's a mental health crisis. We have a huge mental health crisis in this country that we are not properly adjusting. Now, I don't believe in the government fixing the problem because as you've seen with almost everything else, the government doesn't fix any problem whatsoever. They only make things worse. Education, the coof, I mean, what do you want to, I mean, what else do you want, what else do you need over the last few years? I mean, you saw everything that happened with the riots and all of that kind of stuff. They did absolutely nothing about it. And anything, if you tried to defend yourself, they arrested you. So tell me how well the government does work in anything. I'm totally down for private charities greatly increasing their support for mental health. We need more private funding for mental health, private funding, not government intrusion. 
train and properly resource school safety officers. Now, here's one we can agree with on, right? This one I actually agree with because this is the first thing I say almost every single time a school shooting happens. Another one of these tragedies goes down, right? You've got, I don't know exactly how many, but I'm sure it's probably tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, if not into the millions of unemployed veterans in this country, right? You get, we spent millions of dollars as taxpayers on their training, right? You've got unemployed veterans with million dollar skill sets that are set inside of their bodies, that are set inside of their brains, that they were trained to, that they have muscle memory on. You literally could take them and give them a refresher course, check their mental health, make sure they're not crazy. If they are, get them the help they need to through the VA, get them taken care of. And if they're, if they pass all the background checks, if they pass all the, you know, mental health checks and everything else, boom, here you go. Employ them at your local school. You put a veteran, a trained Marine, sailor, airman, freaking soldier on in front, sit them in a chair in front of a school or have them stand up with an AR-15 strapped across their chest. What do you think is going to happen the next time some kid like in Uvalde decides to walk up to a school and start popping off rounds? That kid ain't going to make it five seconds. That's what's going to fix this problem. Also, teachers should be able to allow, should have the ability to pa- to go through and carry on their on school grounds. What that's up to however your school board wants to design it. That's up to you. It's all about local control around here. We want smaller government. We want local control to take a bigger step in conducting these things and pushing the forward the way the community wants them to go. So, in my personal opinion, yes, take the teachers. Go, hey. Just like you used to have to do for the, well, just like you still have to do for your concealed carry actual license here in the state of Texas, go through the concealed carry course, pass all your background checks, get your fingerprints done, and allow them to carry in the school if they want. Because guess what? How many of those teachers do you think could have stopped this kid in Uvalde if they had had a piece on their hip or in the top drawer locked in their desk at their school? Explain to me how that wouldn't fix things. So yeah, the train and properly resource school safety officers, I'm totally down. But here's the difference between me and you on this. I want all of the adults in that school to be safety resource officers. All of them. I want all of them armed, able to defend our children at a moment's notice. Because that's, like they said, that's what this is really all about. Defending the defenseless. Kids cannot fight back. You arm a teacher, you arm some veterans, you stick them outside of a school, that, that will be a defense for these sweet, innocent children that have passed. And these psychotic people on the other side of this gun control argument are literally trying to use their dead bodies as an emotional reaction to force and take away your God-given and ailable rights to self-defense, which are codified in the Second Amendment of our Constitution. Don't like it? Change the Constitution. Good luck with that. All right, so after that rant, these reforms supported by most Texans, lies, would have prevented the shooters in El Paso and Uvalde from obtaining their weapons. Also lies, because here's the other thing about the red flag laws. This kid had a history of mental illness. My understanding is some of the reports we've been hearing is he was even known to the FBI and they did nothing about it. So you want to give even more control over to the government? You've lost your damn mind. All our communities have supported our local law enforcement during these difficult times of civil unrest and pandemic-related violence. Yeah, how well that trust in your law for law enforcement thing work out in Uvalde. Pursuing gun policies in that ease, access to firearms makes the jobs of our first responders even more difficult. Bullshit! It'd make it easier because they would have less to do because everybody in the area would be surrounded by guns. Everybody would be armed. All of our communities have, yeah, okay. Families are asking us how many more shootings must happen before we act. The communities of Uvalde, El Paso, Santa Fe, and Sutherland Springs deserve better. Yeah, they deserved all their teachers to be armed. In response to mass shootings, Florida passed red flag laws, and we can do the same here in Texas. That, don't let them trick you with the Florida thing. That was under previous Democratic governors, and they are still unconstitutional, and they are garbage, and they violate your constitutional rights and your God-given rights to privacy. In the immediacy after the shooting, state leaders specifically spoke out about mental health disparities. I agree with the mental health issue. That's the problem. Oh, here's another issue. Broken homes. Put dads back in the households with their kids. Take the Stop letting the government be the daddy to your children and actually raise your damn kids and be involved with your lives. Yeah, men, I'm talking to you. All of you out there, stand up and take care of your responsibilities. Because I guarantee you, if this kid in Uvalde had actually had a dad in his house and not being raised by his grandma because his mom was off doing God knows what, this wouldn't have happened. Fatherless homes are a major contributing factor to all of this garbage. 
There have been welcome and strategic proposals presented by other state leaders regarding mental health programs, specifically for students in school. We agree that significant advancements in behavioral health, several magnitudes greater than what we were mentioned, are both needed and urgent. Addressing gaps in mental health access would require the state legislature to massively expand existing programs. This would be more funding for school counselors, social workers, and support staff, more government spending, taking more of your tax dollars to do something you don't necessarily agree with. While ex enhancing accessibility, you love how they make it, try to make it all sound nice. And notice they're not talking about any of the guns and any of the rest of this. They're only talking about the mental health issues. That's what the majority of this letter is about, even though they highlight more gun issues than they highlight mental health issues in their little list. We can be better supporters for our first responders by funding mental health programs that allow for patient access and care instead of leaving law enforcement to handle these complex situations. This is the exact same arguments we heard during defund the police. It was instead of getting having police go and check on things, they wanted social workers to do it. How well is that going to work out when a social worker shows up to a crazy man with a knife and they all they've got is a clipboard and a pen? Tell me how that scenario ends. The problem that we face as a state and that local law enforcement faces every day is the ease with which dangerous individuals can contain and access these weapons. Give me a break. Second Amendment, God-given right to self-defense. You should be able to go down to the gas station and pick up a firearm just as easy as you can pack up, pick up a pack of cigarettes or a six-pack of beer. This is BS and we know it. And guess what? Your right to alcohol and uh, cigarettes isn't even in the Constitution, but you know what it is? Guns. Protecting the Second Amendment means passing responsible policies that wide majority of law-abiding gunners support. Once again, bullshit. We cannot stand idly by while more of our fellow Texans, often our children and law enforcement officers, are laid to rest as the result of another preventable shooting. Action is the only thing that will save more lives. Yeah, arm teachers. There's an action you can take. Actually, arm the whole damn country. I fully support government-issued guns. Actually, no, we wouldn't because we'd have a gun shortage in six months, but that's beside the point. So the reason why I did this video, once again, is to highlight that our de sweet, dear sweet mayor here in Corpus Christi, Mayor Paulette Guajardo, signed off on this. Mayor Paulette Guajardo put her name to a letter that is calling for removing your gun rights, your God-given right, your inalienable right to self-defense that is enshrined in the Constitution of our United States, okay? She is in favor of violating those rights. And she needs to be called out for this. She needs to be held accountable for this. And every single one of you that either voted for her or is thinking about voting for her again in the next time needs to be aware of this. Depending on where you stand on guns, this is going to be a major factor with you. But anybody that believes an individual right to self-defense, the individual autonomy of your person to be left to defend yourself against anybody trying to attack you, should absolutely disagree with Mayor Paulette Guajardo in signing her name to this list. I don't know if she didn't read this. Maybe she didn't fully understand it. Maybe she needs an education on the Second Amendment. One of those things needs to happen because this is currently our mayor. And if things ever come down from the federal level and things get really, really bad, the only people that are going to be standing between us and the feds, because the feds don't have enough people to enforce all of the BS dictates, there's enough government agencies, there's enough government employees to come down and enforce their edicts. The only place that those edicts are going to get enforced is at the local levels. Your city council members, your local police stations, your local sheriffs, who will be the ones to enforce illegal and unconstitutional acts by the United States federal government because they don't have the authority to do it. Now you tell me this, if Joe Biden comes out with an executive order banning all rifles, banning all AR-15s, or banning all handguns, how do you feel about whether or not Mayor Paulette Guajardo is going to defend your rights against the federal government or is she going to roll over and take him? You let me know in the comments down below. But hey guys, that's just my common sense take. Let me know what you think about this in the comments down below. If you do enjoy my content, hit that like button, share it with all your friends and subscribe if you are not already because this channel is constantly growing and I could not do it without every single one of you and it doesn't take a thing to hit that little subscribe button. It doesn't cost you nothing. This is Jesse with the Common Man Corpus Christi bringing you news and politics through a common sense lens. Thanks for watching.